don't know where the light came on, but there you go. <laughs> right in my eye hole. You're on. So right now we're working on some EGT sensors uh, over CAN bus to a mega squirt. And I thought this might be helpful for anybody else trying to do this. So we've got an a, uh, AEM 30-2224. And it really isn't that hard to set up the CAN bus, but it really is if you don't know shit about shit, which is where I started. So when you're hooking this up, the wiring's important. The CAN high, the CAN low, that stuff is very important. You have to have 60 ohms of resistance. Um, if you've gotten this far, I assume that you're trying to get communications figured out, but there's all kinds of stupid little details that are left out of everybody's manual and everybody's like, oh, just follow the instructions and it'll work just perfectly. The big thing on a mega squirt is that you can't have hexadecimal in the identifier for each of the messages. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, that's part of the problem because I didn't realize that until we were looking at it, that the code for the identifier, it tells it which message it is, uh, it's it's a hexadecimal code. So you've got to use a calculator to get a decimal code out of it. So hexadecimal would be numbers and letters. So you have to convert that to just numbers because the mega squirt won't take letters in its uh, field. Let me show you. In the can receiving, you can see that we've got our master enable is on. And then this is where we want the variable to be stored in the ECU. This is the type of message. Standard would be an 11 bit. Uh, and an extended would be a 29 bit. So we've got 29 bits coming from the AEM because that's how it's set up. This is what I'm talking about, the message identifier. Getting this, man, what a pain in the butt. Let's see the paperwork, Justin, is that back here? Oh yeah, he threw it in his fit of glory because he figured some stuff out. I figured all of it out. You did, he, Justin did all of this. He just, he's the man. He wrote the magic. Okay, so here's the, here is the manual. You can get it off of AEM's website, but this right here is your identifier. That's important because it's it's an eight, uh, so there's eight bytes in it, and two of those bytes is one thermal couple. So you've got to convert that 0x0000BA00 to a decimal code because you can't put any sort of letters in this. It's just decimal. So I'll take you guys back to the site that I used. I just Googled hexadecimal to decimal converters. And you can see we've got hexadecimal right there, decimal there. And we type in, this was a different one we were doing, but let's just type in this one that, uh, that we're working with. Here, Justin, you want to type that in? No, oh, never mind. I'll, I'll get it. Zero X zero 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 B A zero zero. And then we're gonna convert that into decimal. So that's your message identifier right there. That tells it where all of the data is in that message so it can actually use that. If you look at this guy right here, so there's our number, the 47,616. And then you have to offset it depending on how many, uh, or depending on which byte you wanna read. So on here, you would offset it to byte two to read the second thermal couple. Byte four would be the third thermal couple. Byte four would be the fourth thermal couple. But then you've got to come down here and you've got to do the conversion on this again. So you're just going to add a one onto the end of your decimal. So you see how this one starts at uh, 47617. Offset of zero for the first thermal couple, two for the second thermal couple, four for the third, or yeah, whatever. Six for the last one. <laughs> and then this is important also. So the B2S. The B2S has to do with the endianness. So that's which uh, format it's going to put these two bytes in. So big endian means the high byte first. So it'd be zero and then one. If you do little endian, then it would do the, the low byte first. So that matters. So that's where we got the B. So we've got B2S right there. So that's big. And then we've got two bytes, zero and one. That's our two bytes. And then the signed or unsigned 
the U, uh, sorry, the S on the end of that is our signed. So that's our signed. It's probably a lot to take in all at once, but the B2S is big Indian, two bytes signed. <clears throat> and we're not gonna do any sort of data conversion here yet. We're gonna just leave the one and the one for the multiply and the divide. Why don't you click on it so you, you can see where you're talking about the U. So this guy here, you can see you get all kinds of options and there's a little help section right here. So it tells you what all that stuff means. Also in the main parameters, you cannot use 29-bit Megasquirt CAN with the AEM module, so that has to be off. And then we just left our default baud rate of 500K and your master enable needs to be on so that it will actually pull or receive. Because you didn't read that part of the manual that says yellow is positive, there you go. There's a, there's a part right there. Right there it says yellow is positive, red is negative. Yeah, no shit. No, sir. Sucks that I wired all of these with the red is positive. <laughs> But at least it's in the easiest spot to get to in the car. Yeah. Not a pain in the butt at all. Like this is this is so good. We tested the drive shaft uh, drive shaft sensor last night. We got that working. Yeah. So that's cool. <clears throat> Did you take it for a rip? No. No, I had my chiropractor and. Well, I don't see why you would need a chiropractor. They call me the Hunchback of Colorado. Notre Dame ain't got shit on me. Now with them all wired up right, you can see number one is going up because I heated up that tube. These other ones are pretty close to the same, right around 60 degrees. Let's heat up number two. We've got 208 on number one and 360 on two. 380, 390, 400. It's 270, 260. Thanks, dude. Good job. Love this. I got my little, got my little look I can do the dancing out here. I'm not getting stuck in these stupid bars. And the uh, little pedal little stop. Little throttle pedal stop. So before we were, like I didn't want to ram the uh, pedal, bleh, pedal all the way to the floor because I was afraid I was going to rip the cable in half. That's going on 100%. Oh my gosh. That's so good. And then all of our EGTs are coming in now too. That's so nice to have. <laughs> it's going to be a whole new car for the weekend. Oh, let me see that. Oil drain, new filter. What else? Cleaned the driver's side, oil. Oh, dang, we should have left it up in the air because I got to put my things on. Oh, we can get it back up in the air. Made some little plates to cover the holes that were previously on the car from previous so owner. Lightweight. Yeah, aluminum. Bam! Sucker's gonna sit right in there, a couple rivets. That one as well. Ooh, dang. Dang. I think uh should be good. New alternator on from last time. Filter. Should be good. Dash boot up that way we can wash the oil pressure and all that jazz. 
Give a uh, give a like if Brooke should upgrade his uh, filming camera to a, a newer newer version. <laughs> <laughs> like like the video, a little bit better quality videos. They're they're decent right now, but you could. <laughs> Dry my eyeballs. 85.